Hi, today is November 15th, and we are doing a career pathway interview with Mr. Tim, and he's gonna give us more information about him. So, Mr. Tim, what is your career? My career is a variety of things. I am a carpenter by trade. I am a current business owner. I am a teacher, a trainer. Um, so, I am a carpenter. Okay. How long have you been in your work or field? I've been in this field for close to 40 years. And what led you to this field? Um, well, my grandfather was a carpenter and he owned his own construction company and it was his goal or his dream for his sons and his grandsons to uh, follow in his footsteps and run his company. So I kind of followed in uh, his footsteps uh, and that's why, that's why I'm in this field. Good. Um, what did you need to get here? Did you do any schooling, any certification, any um, certificates, or, you know, was it your years of experience? It was all of those things. So I am a, a skilled tradesman, which it took um, four years of a, um, an apprenticeship, a paid apprenticeship. An apprenticeship is uh, on-a-job training that you get paid for. So you start off at a pretty good wage as a, as a union term, but you start off at half of what the uh, journeyman, which is uh, the top, um, um, I guess the, when you finish your schooling, you will become a journeyman. You get half of what they make when you start an apprenticeship. So that's four years. And then you, um, and then you do your schooling, your book work and class work, like college work at night, and you work during the day. So it's a lot of training and certifications and um, that goes into being a skilled tradesperson. Okay, that's it. What barriers did you face in getting there? Were there any barriers or any challenges? There were many, there are many challenges. Um, and I guess the biggest one for me being a, a black man is that, um, that racism was a big part of the construction industry. So to fight through that, and to get through that was uh, was one of the biggest challenges. But not all people on the construction site was bad. I met a very, very good people on the construction site, but uh, it was a lot of, it was a lot of men on the construction site and a lot of time men can act like little boys. And so those were challenges. Um, but I was determined to finish my apprenticeship. So I fought through all of those things and um, became a journeyman. And not only a journeyman, but a teacher and a trainer and a business owner. Good. Did anything about your journey um, to this career, did anything surprise you or kind of take you, you know, by storm? Or did anything surprise you? Did anything, like, stick out to you? Well, um, yeah. I guess one thing that surprised me is how dangerous this job could be. So working in construction, you know, you can't take your safety or your, um, you know, you can't take it for granted that you can just go to work and uh, come home the same way every day. So you have to be very, very careful on the job. You gotta be paying attention to, um, to those around you and things around you. But that's what surprised me is that things could go bad really, really fast on the job site if you're not um, paying attention. Good. What is your biggest success um, through through all of this? What would you say was a big success for you? Well, my biggest success is running as being part of uh, running my own company. So we did many uh, major projects in downtown Milwaukee, and so um, one of my my biggest success is the beer line project on Pleasant or Walnut and Wells or uh, Walnut and Water, where we did all of the windows, the doors, the cabinets. Uh, in all of those apartments down there, and it was 700 units. Mm -hmm. So that was and is to this day my biggest success, the thing that I'm most proud of. Good. Is there anything that you would do different along this journey or through this process? There's a lot of things that I would do different. Um, 
I think that uh, as you get older, then you, you learn some of the things. Like I, I would have been more patient when I was, um, and when I first started. And I think I could have been a little more bull, I was, I was a little bullheaded and stubborn. So some things that you learn along the way that I probably would have did differently, some things personally that I would have did. And of course there was some ways that uh, sometimes that I lost money in business mm -hmm. or some jobs that I shouldn't have taken. Um, but I followed my passion and I followed my heart and I did that. So if I could uh, do it over again, I probably wouldn't have did some of those things. Okay. Explain and review a day in your life. So a day in your career, kind of from beginning to end, what kind of does your day consist of in this in this career? Well, with what I'm doing right now, um, my, day, my day gets up where um, I, I would get up and and my first thing I would do is pray or meditate today to get the mm -hmm. day started off. Um, for me, um, what I would say is right. And then I would uh, do my office work, some office work before I have to go out in the field. So it's some days that I would spend all day in the office, but it's other days like today that I would be actually out in the field doing carpentry work. So a day like today, I did a little work in the office and then I went out in the field and got my trucks together and we went and worked on a uh, lady ceiling today and then I wrapped up and then for business owner is not over at 4.30 or 5.30, mm -hmm. then I have to go home and then I have to uh, do my receipts and my books and things like that. So it's a pretty long day for me um, uh, running the business like I do on right now. Okay, perfect. What is the most interesting part of your career? The most interesting part, I guess, would be the people. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so the, and I guess the, and I would say interesting, and and because I guess I like it the most would be the training part and teaching and passing on uh, this trade and watching people learn it and get it and um, not only get it but master it and go on to be successful in it. So that's probably one of the most interesting parts of what I do. What is the passion interest that drives you to keep this career? So what makes you want to do this um, continuously and daily? And like, how, where do you see yourself in maybe the next 10 years with this particular career? Well, the money is good, to be honest. Okay. Um, so right, that's what's driving me right now. That's not what always has driven me. So I ought to. I also want to see my community built, uh, be built up, and I also want to be able to leave a legacy. So all of those things are what drive me. So right now, uh, in these days and times, there's um, there are there is a lot of money to be made, and I want to make it the right way, and I want to teach other people how to um, legitimately be able to provide for their families. So those are the things that drive me. Okay. Um. Do you have employees? Do you have people that work with you that kind of assist you daily? What do you look for in your in your employees? Um, I do have employees, and I do have people that assist me daily, and I do have partnerships. So in this industry, you can't do it alone. So um, and so my main focus right now is teaching and training. So I usually work with um, newer people into the industry, younger people that want to get into the industry and teach them the right way to um, to do this. What was the second part of your question? Um, what do you see yourself in 10 years um, doing this? Do you see yourself doing this in 10 years maybe? No. Or, okay. <laughs> I'll be retired in 10 years, so that's why I'm going hard at it right now. Um, so my goal is to teach. So in 10 years, my dream job would to be teaching in some college or um, technical school or doing something like that. That's where I would see myself in, in 10 years, not actually physically doing uh, the work anymore. Okay, perfect. Is there anything else that you would um, like to share with, um, with our young people? Um, 
about your um, career, any words of encouragement, any any other things that you would like to add that maybe we didn't ask? Yeah, yes, I would. Uh, I talk to a lot of young people and I ask them, what do you want to do? They say, I want to run my own business. And I say, that's a noble thing. And that's, you know, and that should always be the goal. Mm -hmm. But to run your own business, you have to either provide a service or a product so you have to figure out what you want to do and how you want to do it and you have to do it well so my encouragement to you as young people if you want to run your own business is to start off working for somebody learn how to do it and master it and then go out and sell your product but you cannot you never can start at the top you always have to start at the bottom and work your way up and running your own business is hard work. That means you get up early in the morning and you work till late at night. So it's good to want to run your own business, but just know it's going to be hard work. And I would say go for it. You can make a lot of money, but that can't be your only driver. It has to be other things that you have to shoot for. Is this really what you want to do? Is this something that you love doing? Is it going to help somebody else? Mm -hmm. Those are the other, the other the questions that you have to ask other than is it just going to make me a lot of money? That's what I would want to encourage to uh, leave with the young people. All right, absolutely. We thank you so much, Mr. Tim, for um, giving us your time today um, and helping us with our career profile pathways. Thank you.